Uh, I want to start with a question. So can I pick up any, uh, any NAND flash and put up a commodity controller and use any kind of interface and which is hooked to the computer systems and that's it? No, actually not. So we got to qualify and for any storage device to be qualified as enterprise class storage device, there are a few parameters. So what we name it as the sustained performance, enterprise price availability, and high capacity density. What do we mean by sustained performance? Uh, the thing is, across diverse workloads, um, across capacity utilization point, and the last, uh, the most important point is what happens over the lifetime of the device what happened to the performance? Does it degrade? What happens? Does it fluctuate a lot? What is the coefficient of variation of the performance? Those are important parameters for any storage device to be, to be classified as enterprise class. And then enterprise class data availability. What happens to data loss scenarios? Do they have the data path protection uh, from application to the media itself? And what, what about the ECC and um, the RAID? What if we need to build the data again? So do they have anything else? And then the capacity. Can we have the highest possible packaging density in a given form factor with a lot of constraints, such as power? Who can do it? Yes, Flash Max can do it. Now, in the next couple of slides, we're going to substantiate the argument. And let's see how it goes. So on the left side of the slide, we can look at we have the hardware platform, which is NAND. And then we spent sleepless nights, um, weekends, weekdays, uh, discussed hours and hours about the performance, competition, product features, and whatnot. And then we perfected our controller and the driver so then we can give the best in class uh, performance, uh, not only the peak performance, but also the sustained performance. That is one of our parameters. And then engineering and team burden did not stop. We are highly ambitious, highly aggressive team. So we used the existing technology and made the storage device available over the network that Paul is going to talk about in the next couple of slides. So what do we do here? We kind of virtualized the underlying complexity of the hardware. We have the driver interface, which uh, optimizes or rather maximize the any kind of dollar that user has invested in the storage device and give the maximum possible return. We have uh, FTL, which is kind of uh, a conversion layer which converts the logical addresses to the physical addresses and keep the table maintained. And after that, we have the management, flash management layer which is kind of responsible for giving us the best in class uh, performance. So how does it do? And then we have the flash over RAID. So this is the nice pictorial view of the best in class uh, performance, uh, sustained performance. So this is what we have as specifications. And then when the device is seasoned, it goes more into uh, in the usage. Then we look at the performance, it drops. What happens to the mixed read and write for databases? So you see the, the performance start degrading. And then when we have GC enabled, which is the garbage collection mode, and when we, the device is aged, the performance degrades. It fluctuates a lot. But that does not happen with Flash Max. Why is that so? Our driver layer is so intelligent. It does some kind of intelligent scheduling of the user write and the flash management rights. <coughs> if you look at these small bar charts, so you will notice that whenever the user rights are lesser, the flash management rights are higher. <coughs> so that is how we have the best in class uh, performance and the sustained performance. I would say sustained performance, I would emphasize that. And that's how we achieve the kind of linear nature of this uh, performance. So not only that, for enterprise class storage devices, we need to have the uh, power protection. What happens if the power is failed? So what we commit is any kind <coughs> of committed rights that goes to the flash media, irrespective of power is available or not. And then we have 
data path protection and uh, the redundant storage of the metadata so that when it comes to checking the parity checking and the uh, data integrity checks, we have something. And then the proactive mapping or indication of the bad blocks. So over the time, as we all know, flash ages. So how do we predict the failure of a block and then mark it as a bad block and move data from one place to the other? That's very important for flash devices. How do we do that? So we have that intelligence in the driver. And here is the product line. So what we have is capacity from 550 GB to uh, 4.8 terabyte, which is the highest in the industry in the small form factor devices. I don't think any company has ever achieved 4.8 terabyte capacity in the low profile form factor. And the performance is like 2.5 plus GBPS of reads and <coughs> approximately one or 1.1 kind of write speeds. Here's the competition. So then the next question is, okay, we are so good. How do we perform in the industry? How do we compete with the different companies? So what we presented here is the comparison with Fusion IO 3.2 device, 3.2 terabyte device versus R 4.8 device. So I would not hesitate to say R 4.8 TB device has fused the gas of Fusion IO 3.2 terabyte device. So look at the performance, amazing. We are almost two times as high as 3.2 terabyte Fusion IO is. Amazing. Why do you think the random writes are as good? So, for Fusion IO? For Fusion IO or us? Well, yeah, the Fusion IO looks better. <laughs> than, yeah, but look at the sustained mix performance. Look at that. So there's no single application which you will only do writes and not reads. So the real class applications are the mixed applications, not only writes. So we got to be careful looking at the mix. 75, 25 IOPS, 120 compared to the 100K. 1.5 times better. <laughs> Capacity is high as well. The dollars per gig is equal. Why wouldn't I choose Fuse, uh, <coughs> Virident, PCI, Flash Max, compared to Fusion IO? No reason. So yeah, so that is why I say, I have no hesitation to say, we have fused the gas or diffused the gas of Fusion IO. Here comes the latency chart. So look at the gap. Flash Max is here, and the competitors are here. The big gap. The latencies are in the range of microseconds. Uh, IOPS 180, look, look at these graphs. Amazing latencies, which are very good for the database applications, uh, high-frequency training applications, and a bunch of more. So your, we look at your, that. Your write latencies are, are less than the read latencies? Yes, because of the nature of the flash. So when, what happens when we go from the one feature size of uh, NAND to the next one? From, for example, 25 nanometer to 20 nanometer, your page open size goes bigger and bigger. So you got to read more. So obviously the latency goes higher. So page page size is bigger. So that's why when you start reading so from NAND. You're writing the RAM and, and reading from flash. You're writing the RAM and then destaging it to flash. Yes. <coughs> and, and there's a capacitor on the card to? Yes to back up any uh, committed transaction. So whatever happens to power failure, we have the capacitor sitting on the board, which will commit to the right. Yep. So no data loss. So that is why we say it's an enterprise, enterprise class a storage device. Yep. And, and the, the garbage collection happens during idle periods? Is that? Uh, no. So look at, look at the graph again. So that's a kind of interesting thing. So the scheduling, is done in a way that whenever the user rights are heavy, the scheduling, the garbage collection is lesser. Look at these graphs, look at these charts. So the red bars are the user rights, and the black bars are the uh, management, the flash management uh, transactions. So the moment there are um, heavy user rights, we definitely reduce the garbage collection. Yeah, yeah. So that's a brain of our uh, best-in-class sustained performance, which nobody can 
so so far nobody could beat us. So then why is your rights, your pure right activity, worse than fusion? I, I don't understand that. So, so one way to think about it is what we have on our architecture in the converter. One set and then your mixed workload is better. Mm -hmm. Because of our right reads. Look at the read performance. Three, uh, two, double, almost double a fusion. So fundamentally, you have to think of our architecture as a highly parallel, right? We expose almost an order of magnitude more operations. Yeah. What we do is we manage this through a hierarchy of controllers. We have multiple controllers. So our 4.8 board has two stage controller designs. So we have a controller for every 24 packages that gets mirrored into a other board that's 48 packages that are controlled by two controllers. So fundamentally what we are is power limited in these designs. So we have to work in a power conforming 25 watt profile. And to hit this, uh, in that 25 watt profile, because we use FPG yesterday, we are limited on the peak right performance compared to Fusion IO. All right. I shouldn't wave my hands too much. So essentially we sacrifice, so we are designed better for multi-third, multi-core multi use cases, but we want agility in our products. So we design with flexible architecture that has certain power constraints today that limits our peak performance. But you'll see that where it shines up is the mixed workloads, which is where most of the real world use cases are. So when real applications go through file systems and how we see reads and writes mixed up into the IO devices coming in, we outshine most of the time. That makes sense? And, yes. and, and to some extent, <clears throat> you know, peaks are like zero to 60 times. Correct. Yeah. You, know, you, you can get a, an American muscle car and it'll go in a straight line really well, but Correct. you really don't want to drive it on a road course. Correct. Correct. Where we are very good at, I mean, these devices are still expensive compared to hard drives. So you want to oh. put it in environments. <laughs> <laughs> We're making them cheaper, but still, you know. I, I talk to a lot of customers who complain about the cost all the time, but um, we are following the Moore's Law, so every year you know, it gets cheaper and we're hitting the sub $3 price points and we're gonna keep driving it down, soon it'll start crossing over. But in these devices, you wanna keep the utilization of IOs very high. So you wanna operate them in modes where you have 64, 128 threads or queues backed up and you wanna service most out of these devices and there'll be a mixture of reason writes as you get more and more virtualized, there's going to be more random reads and writes that gets mixed up. And that's where, that's where we have designed this and that's why we've optimized it. Yeah. Go ahead, Roy. Yeah, thanks, Kumar. In, in the smaller capacity devices, there's better random read, better, better random write, better sequential write throughput. Because you're spreading the workload across less flash. Physical. The smaller device has almost got better performance across the board than the larger device. Um, okay, so for the reason for that is these 2.2, they are come on 25 nanometer flash. Oh, okay. So, and this is the older going flat. towards yeah, 25 yeah, nanometer. Okay. Yeah, so, the, so the access so, strength goes up. Yes, yeah. The geometries, the yeah, flash yeah. gets worse, it gets cheaper. Yes, it gets cheaper. But, but it gets more difficult to manage. <laughs> I got you. Yes. So we got to have more ECC uh, so that we can, we can have the enterprise, enterprise class reliability. That's a kind of important for uh, the enterprise guys. So we got to have more um, provisioning for these guys so that we can have the best in class performance as well as the reliability. So with 20 nanometer shrinking the geometries, we'll see some changes, uh, but still optimized from the cost and performance point of view. Yes, we talked about the huge uh, gap. So as Kumar was talking about, we are designed for the multi-threaded, multi q depths environments. So you can see that this is the loaded latency, which, is, uh, which means that when we have the multi-thread operations going on, we can see the gap between us and the computer. It's huge. Where do we shine? Again, so look at the Oracle TPCC benchmarks, TPCH benchmarks, and the high-frequency trading benchmarks. We shine. And the real class applications. Look at the performance. Here we are comparing the Flash Max second generation, the first generation, and the Fusion IO. So the blue guys are Fusion IO, and the other two are us. And you can easily compare the applications with OLTP from OLTP to the 
high frequency trading and file metadata. We shine everywhere. Now, so as we said earlier, um, we're going to substantiate the argument that we are the enterprise class storage device. We have given the data, we have proven the point, if we go back and look at this triangle. Sustained performance, enterprise price, availability, and liability, the highest capacity, uh, which is 4.8 TB, we are the clear winner. That's all.